Welcome to the Daily Race. Uh, we are continuing our, our study in the book of Acts, the, the story of the early church. Um, what happened after Jesus ascended into heaven? How did the church grow and expand? That's what the book of Acts is all about. And the overriding theme in it is the work of the Holy Spirit. How Jesus' gift to the church, the, the Holy Spirit, is guiding, is leading, uh, is moving forward uh, the movements and, and the directions. And we just see it over and over again. And today we have another account of that. As, as Paul, uh, we saw you <laughs> yesterday, Paul was arrested. Um, he's brought before the Jewish council. Um, and uh, he does some, he, once again, he, he knows the culture. He knows the Pharisees and the Sadducees and all these groups here. And he gets them into confusion <clears throat> by just saying one simple thing. Uh, he talks about the message of Jesus, but he says the hope in the resurrection of the dead. And at this point, the council divided because that was their big issue. Sadducees, Pharisees, um, Pharisees believed in, in, the, in the resurrection. Sadducees did not believe in a resurrection. Once again, it, it doesn't matter the details of all their specific beliefs, but the point is that now they're fighting with each other. And Paul is in the crosshairs, and it's getting violent. There's all kinds of things happening. So uh, the Roman officials take take Paul out of this situation, and uh, he's taken back into prison to be protected. Verse 11, though. And this is where the rest of the book of Acts is headed. So this is, Paul gets a, a new focus. The Holy Spirit reveals to him what the rest of his life is going to be spent doing. So let me read this here in verse 11. It says this, That night the Lord appeared to Paul and said, be encouraged, Paul, just as you have been a witness to me here in Jerusalem, you must preach the good news in Rome as well. You must preach the good news in Rome as well. Rome was essentially the center of their their known world at that point. Um, in that, that area, North Africa, the Mediterranean, Europe, Rome was the center of it all. That's where all power was. That's where the Caesar lived. That's where directives were coming from the most important people, um, some of the most important people on the planet at that point in history were there in Rome. And the Holy Spirit tells Paul, you're going to go to Rome and you're going to preach there. That, that's where you're going to finish your life doing. Now, this was an encouragement to him because he's in prison in Jerusalem. <laughs> there's, there's riots, there's death threats, there, there's all of these things that they want him dead. But this hope that, hey, this is not the end. You still have work to do. And it begins to be a, a a focal point for him from this point forward. It doesn't mean that Paul's going to be released from here and automatically go to Rome. <laughs> that he's just, they're just going to let him walk out the door. He's going to hop on a ship and zip right over and he'll be there. No, there's, there's well, we're only in chapter 23. We've got a bit more time here in, in, in uh, the book of Acts. There's going to be some ups and some downs. But God is going to use some of his past, his, his Roman citizenship in particular, to get him to a place where it doesn't make sense that he would get. Only God in his, his planning and his preparation for, for Saul's ministry is setting him up on this course towards Rome. Once again, as I said, it, it, it's not easy. It's not going to be simple. Uh, as Paul is in prison that night, he's in jail that, that night, word gets out that a group of these religious leaders, of over 40 of them, come together and say, we will not eat until we kill Paul. So they set up a trap. They said, well, you know what, let's, let's call for him to come down to the um to the, the the council chambers again and while the roman officials are bringing him we're going to we're going to, to lay an ambush we're going to kill him we're, we're going to murder him this word gets back to to paul uh, paul lets his jailers know and, and they come up with a plan and in fact let, let me read what the plan is there it says this um uh the commander called two of his officers over over and ordered get 200 soldiers ready to leave for Caesarea at 9 o'clock tonight. Also take 200 spearmen and 70 mounted troops. So a detachment of almost 500 soldiers are going to go along to help Paul. Provide horses for Paul to ride and get him safely to Governor Felix. So then we're going to get Paul out of here. Why does he do all this for Paul? Just this, first of all, his citizenship. He, it was his responsibility to protect this Roman citizen. So he's going to get him safely out of town. He's going to get him away from this threat. And he's going to get him to the governor of, of Felix. We're going to see how that interaction goes tomorrow. But 
as he's moving along here, he's getting closer and closer to Rome. But Paul's seeing God's work at hand, even in difficult situations, from a death threat to a, a parade of, a, of almost 500 people uh, taking him to the next stop in his journey towards Rome. God's hand is at work, and he's using unusual people to bring it about. People that, I mean, they don't really care about God and his mission. But he's using them and their positions of influence and power to move him closer and closer to God's will for his life. And you know, so often God uses unexpected people in our lives to, to bring us further along in our journey. It might be an employer. It might be you're in the military, a commander. It might be uh, a, a school principal or a teacher. People that, that are, are, are good people, but they're not necessarily godly people in the sense that they're seeking after God. But God uses all kinds of people to move forward his mission, to open a door for you, to provide an opportunity, to protect you from, from something. God uses all types of people to forward his mission. God is sovereign and in control. So when we're, we're taking our, our next steps forward, when God calls you to something particular, just know that he is going ahead of you. He is planning that way. doesn't mean that it's, not gonna, that it's gonna be easy. It doesn't mean that it's, it's not gonna be dangerous and hazardous risks but know that God is in control and we can trust him more than we can trust our own abilities and self sometimes. All right, let's go ahead and pause there for today. Uh, Paul is, is being escorted on his way to Rome with some stops along the way, and he's heading to see the next highest official in the town, governor or in the region, Governor Felix. And let's see how he uses that opportunity tomorrow. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for today. We thank you that you open doors that, that we could never see in our own, in our own ability and our own time span opening. But you do miraculous things all the time. God, help us to see those for what they are. Help us not to just think that they're a coincidence. Help us not just to think that we have good luck, God, but help us to see you at work in our lives. How you are moving, how you are working, how you are providing ways forward. Ways that we wouldn't expect and, and sometimes we don't even dare to pray for because we think it's so improbable and impossible. God, we depend on you today for our next right step. We depend on you tomorrow for another step after that. And we know that you're going to continue opening doors, opening pathways for us. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. All right. Well, hey, I hope you have a great, great rest of the day. I look forward to seeing you 24 hours from now right back here on The Daily Race. Love you guys.